what's going on everybody? Jeremy from Whistlekick coming at you. I don't know what episode number this is. I don't know when it's going to air. I just know that there was something I wanted to talk about. If you are listening through your podcast feed, this is one of those episodes that I'm recording in the vehicle and I do have the GoPro on the dash. So we get a little bit of video. You can see out the window past my head while I'm driving. I am driving back from the SMART, that's the State Martial Arts Ratings and Totals, I believe is the acronym, the main competitive martial arts circuit. Their championship was yesterday and they were kind enough to invite us over. So I came over, set up the booth from the Kickmobile, which actually is a different vehicle now, considering renaming it the Kickwagon, but that's completely irrelevant to what I'm here to talk about today. I am here to talk about competition and not why you should do it or why you shouldn't do it, but a different perspective of how to think about it. And before we get into that, if you are new to this show, if you're finding us on YouTube and have never seen what we do before, you should check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or whistlekick.com. That's where you can find everything that we do. Of course, There are quite a few other episodes of this show that you can find everything from interviews with world-renowned martial artists to roundtable discussions to profiles of movies and actors, history segments, to my opinions. We have quite the variety, so hope you check out that stuff, as well as the products that we make, our newsletter, the various websites that we do, all for you, the traditional martial artist because I love traditional martial arts and I wanted a business that would help support those that participate and grow the scene, realm, community, whatever word you want to use overall. Let's talk about competition. If you are a listener to the show, you know that one of the questions that we ask in almost every interview is about competition. The majority of our guests, I would say even the majority of martial artists at some point compete, whether that's a small competition within their school or a regional competition, maybe even a broader national competition. And it tends to be a very quietly polarizing question. People tend to love competition or strongly dislike competition. Even those that haven't participated in competition a lot tend to promote the benefits of competition talk about competition as something that can help you meet new people or refine your skills or be exposed to new ideas, new techniques, new methodologies. And then we have the folks on the other side of the argument saying that competition dilutes the true spirit of martial arts. It tends to promote ego. It can be horrendously really, I guess, is horrendously subjective. And it can keep people focused on the things that don't really matter. All of those things are true. Which leads to a question. What do you do? If you have benefits and negatives, pros and cons, to both competing and not competing, how do you reconcile those? And I'm going to suggest that the answer is actually the same answer to a lot of questions that we have, not only in martial arts, but in life in general. So let's go back a a bit. Let's take a big step back and talk about what I mean. The first thing to consider is that the human body is amazing at adapting. We are adaptation machines. There's a great example of being really narrow, but if you look on a box of any prepared food, you've probably seen that these numbers, you know, the the nutrition information is based on a 2,000 calorie diet. The idea that the typical human being living in a modern society needs about 2,000 calories a day to survive and not become unhealthy, either from weight loss or weight gain. There's some kind of stasis in there 
for the average person, they've said it's about 2,000 calories, okay? Well, we see examples of times in, in famine or people that have been imprisoned in less than ideal conditions where they're getting so much less than that and they still survive. And not just for a couple weeks, but for years. Weight training, the idea that people can get tremendously stronger or as a endurance athlete, get much faster. The human body adapts to whatever we do. And I'm sure you can think of a bunch of other examples. I'm not going to name off every example I can think of, but you can probably come up with three or four right now that I didn't mention. And this is a generally accepted thing. I don't know that anybody out there is going to disagree that when we work on things, we adapt to them. When we don't practice things, when we don't work on them, we lose that adaptation. And the same is true of our martial arts. When we work on certain movements or flexibility or power, our body adapts. It becomes more efficient, more usable from that perspective. And when you don't, you lose it. You use it or lose it. You can say the same about competition. If we've spent a lot of time competing, refining our forms, our sparring, our training towards competition, we're going to adapt to have better results from, that, from, from those tests. If you practice your forms in a way that a referee at a competition will like them, you're going to get better in that way. But you can say the same thing from the other way. If you spend all of your time not competing, if you never practice your forms from the perspective of what would do well in competition, you are honing your martial arts in that way. You are adapting to be a non-competitive martial artist. The greatest benefit to any human being when we consider adaptation is to do the thing that you aren't used to doing. The marathon runner that spends six to eight weeks lifting weights, even a light weight training program, even, let's say, two hours a week, if it's programmed correctly and they do it well, is going to see tremendous benefit to their running. By the same token, someone who spends all their time in the gym lifting weights, if they spend a couple hours a week doing some complimentary running, you know, maybe running some, some 400 meter sprints or running a mile a couple times a week, that's going to translate back into their weight training. They're going to have more cardiovascular fitness and thus be able to have more capacity in the gym. Of course, it depends on what your programming looks like. You may or may not benefit from that, but hopefully you see what I'm getting at there. If you spend all of your time practicing for competition, you're going to lose on some of the non-competitive benefits. Now, this becomes far more subjective than the example I keep going back to about endurance training versus strength training. But it's in there. What are the benefits? What are the things that the non-competitive martial artist spends their time working on? They tend to be more around the personal development. The, if we isolate our discussion to forms, a competitive form is generally going to look different from a non-competitive form for most of us. Depends on the style, depends on the form. If you're spending the time working on your forms because you love them, because you want to explore them, to get better with them for your own purposes, 
there's benefit there. I remember one particular day where I was training and it happened to be, for whatever reason, I don't remember a lot of the details. I was a brown belt. I was a, a teenager, maybe 14. And myself and this other young woman, we were the only two people in the room, in the dojo, higher than probably blue belt for whatever reason that day. And the instructor said, you two go over there and practice Nahanshu. For those of you that, that don't have Nahanshin or don't know that form, most systems have a form that is very similar and it's, it, it's a straight line side to side. It's a completely lateral form. And we practiced Nahanshin because that was all the space there was. We spent an entire class practicing Nahanshin. When we started that, that 45 minutes or so that we worked on that kata that day, I hated Nahanshin. It was my least favorite kata. I found it boring. I thought it was stupid. I didn't know why it existed. I didn't like it. And I was incredibly resistant to working on it. And don't get me wrong, I love forms. At that time I was competing and I didn't see the benefit of working on a form that had no purpose in competition, that had no flair to it. Now Hanshin, as we did it in our school, was pretty short, 30 seconds, 45 seconds maybe, I don't know that I've ever timed it, but definitely shorter than most of the forms we had. Well, by the end of that class, I had managed to find elements in that form that I loved. And I went from absolutely hating it to enjoying it. And it's still a form I really enjoy. And that taught me a tremendous lesson that day, that my forms didn't have to just be for competition and the only forms worth doing weren't ones that would be great in competition. I'm never gonna do Nahanshin in a tournament. But I like it. And some of those lessons that I learned around enjoying a form, around finding my own timing, my own style, with performing that form translated back into competition. At the same time, the things that I've learned about my forms in competition have translated into doing forms just in practice. To say it another way, I know for a fact I am a better martial artist because of the time I've spent in competition. And I know that I am a better martial artist because of the time I've spent doing things that have no place, no purpose for competition. I'm better because I've done both. And I would argue that any martial artist is better because of doing both. One of the major debates these days is around the practical application of martial arts. There are some schools that will not do things that aren't practical. Okay. There are some schools that have, that don't even seem to care about what's practical. Okay. But again, if we consider adaptation, if we consider the idea that variety is good, that a diverse martial artist is a better martial artist, working on practical things. If we work on things that have practical application, it's going to make our non-practical things better. We're gonna to start to look at the, the techniques that we do and say, is there practical value in this? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. If there isn't, maybe we find another reason for doing it. This technique is fun. I am 
never going to do a jump spinning crescent kick in a self-defense situation. I, I, am, I am not Jean-Claude Van Damme. I don't have a movie coming out. I do that movement because it's fun. Because I'm knocking on 40. And to, to do things that still require high skill reminds me of my capability as a human being, as a martial artist. To take a look at what I'm able to do from what works in a practical setting makes the other movements I'm doing better as well. So you can see this juxtaposition that happens throughout martial arts and the value for doing things for different reasons. For competition, for fun, for practicality, for self-defense. To say it another way, you will become a better martial artist doing the things you are worst at. You may not enjoy that training, but if you can find a way to enjoy it, it will become even better, more effective, and faster. I hope this has made sense. Of course, I'm in the car. I have no notes to go on. I get interesting feedback when we do these episodes. Surprisingly, most of you seem to love Jeremy off the cuff. Jeremy unplugged? No, I don't think we can say unplugged. There's, you can see there's wire right there. <laughs> but I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope I've made you think because that is my goal most of the time. I would love to hear your feedback, whether that's on social media. We are at Whistlekick everywhere. If you want to email me directly, that's jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher or anywhere you find podcasts. We are all over the place. You can find the other episodes that we've done at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. You can find the products and the other websites that we produce at whistlekick.com. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Peace, everybody.